The Tron Herb Best G T220S Lite. Is it worth it? I'll tell you now. Hey guys, so welcome back. Okay, so this is the second video on the Tron Hu Best G220, uh, the T220S. Uh, I have actually been very impressed with this printer. I was given this printer by Tron Hu to do a review on. I did not buy the printer. I want to disclose that firstly, but this is a true and honest uh, review and I'm not receiving any payment for this review. So this is my honest opinion of the machine. So and about two weeks ago, I did the unboxing of this and we put it together. It was really simple to put, to put together, seemed well built. And over the last two weeks, I have been running a couple of tests. And in general, I'm actually incredibly happy with this machine. Um, there are a few shortcomings, which I'll get to now, now. But other than that, it is a good quality machine at its price range. Uh, it's around $250 for the base unit. And so far, things are looking very, very good. Guys, bear in mind, this is a very new machine on the market. And I have expressed my concerns to Tron Hu about the issues that I've faced. Uh, there have not been many and uh, it was mostly due to when we unboxed it that the belts were loose and stuff like that which is acceptable because it was in transport but they're looking at ways to improve that so while i've been using this machine for a, a week at well two weeks i have been looking at issues that i've had with it and i have not come across a lot the build quality of the machine is really good uh, it's a sturdy base it's got this solid metal base which is really sturdy got a great touchscreen works really well i've had no issues with the touchscreen at all uh, very responsive and um, the only issue we had was with the files loading but tron who is looking at that so there was an issue with the the file uh, menu loading you had to go when you went in sometimes it wouldn't show you'd go back and go back in and then the menu was there it's not a big issue uh, but it is something that they are looking at the other thing was the tightening of the belts is a little bit cumbersome and um, and difficult but once it got it going, this printer print like an absolute bomb. As I showed you in the previous video, I did a benchy straight off it. This is as it comes off. It's a clean benchy. There's a couple of wisps, but that's due to my Cura slicing profile. And uh, the overhangs are really good. The lettering is good on the bottom. So all in all, this really came out very nicely. And I'm very impressed with the print of that. So, and I've been printing a few other things. Like for example, this is a great print. This is a coffee shoot by Millet. Now, to me, that is super exciting that Millet is coming into the market and, and offering uh, free STLs for you to print on your printer to do things for your home. So I'm going to do a follow-up video on this uh, specific cap because it is absolutely great. So I'm going to do another follow-up video of, of practical things to print. That's my next video coming out. Yeah, so I have got a print on here that I'm quite excited about. I printed this last night. It took about eight and a half hours to print and it's a print in place print. Now, what is exciting about these print in place prints is that there are special mechanisms within, such as gears, springs and clips and all that sort of thing. And you get a general, you know, you get a file that has got a gear, then you only get one that's got a spring. This one's got all three. It's got, well, actually all four. It's got joints, it's got springs, it's got uh, gears, and it's got a clip. So I have not removed this from the bill pad. I thought I would do this on the video so you can see exactly how it goes. And uh, I'm quite excited to do that. The one mistake I made, which might cause a bit of a problem, is I did print with a brim. I don't know why I did that. I hadn't changed the setting from a previous small print that I did. So I might have a problem with that. But I will quickly take this off. So now, as you know, it's got a magnetic bill plate. So all you've got to do is bend it and it pops off beautifully. And there's my print is off, which is really nice. No scrapers, no digging in around them. I can never get these things to line up, these magnetic plates. I love them, but I can never get them straight on the, on the, <laughs> oh, whatever, whatever, I'll, I'll, there we go, there we go, that's better, okay. I can never get it straight on first try because the magnets fight you. Right, so give me a second while I quickly take this, uh, this um, brim off and then we'll look at the general quality of the print and see how the in-place printing came about. Okay, so that took me a few minutes to remove the brim. I haven't uh, completely removed it, but I have removed it enough. 
which is a bit of a pity because it did ruin the print a little bit. It, it's going to take a lot of cleaning up. So guys, if you want to print an in-place print, do not print a brim. That was so silly of me. I will try print this again without a brim and see how that looks. But that's how we learn. That's how we learn in 3D printing. We live and we learn with mistakes. Okay. So here's our box. It does work. Okay. It does it. And now also does latch closed, but it doesn't spring open because of uh, of too much rubbish around the, the, the gear here. But it's got gears. It's got the spring, which have all worked. The clip works. So all in all, uh, the quality of the, of the print is really good. And I'm incredibly pleased with this. I just wish I hadn't done the brim, obviously, but that's my mistake, not the printer's mistake. So, yeah, and this was printed out in eSun PLA Plus, uh, a great filament to work with. Uh, it does make your prints look exceptional. This, and also if you look at the, the print quality of this print, it is really good. It even actually reflects light off it, which is quite amazing. The print quality is generally quite impressive. Again, okay. hold the phone, hold the phone. This is me eight hours later. I was just going to go and edit this and I thought, no, I can't give you a sloppy, horrible video with a horrible mistake that I made with putting the, uh, the brim on there. We can't properly test how the, the print in place printers. So I decided to redo it. So eight hours later, here we go. So let's have a look at this. All right. So, um, yeah, this looks a lot better. There's no brim on here. Let's pop it off. Nice and easy. A bill plate is still nice and hot and, 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 uh, yeah, this is going to be good. So there we go. Print in place with no brim. Let's try this out. Let's see how it does. Straight out of the box. There we go. Come on. Oh, <laughs> so much better. Yeah, I wanted to show you this. You know, this does give you a good indication. Guys, I've done no tweaking on this printer and I'm getting that print result. This is off the build plate directly and there it works. So very pleased about that. Let's get back to where we were and we can take it from there. Thanks. Uh, the printer has got a run out sensor, which I've taken off here to show you guys. And uh, we've also got your hot end here, which can be easily unplugged. Now, that brings me to the rest of the thing. I took the bottom of this, so let's have a look at that quickly. You'll see that it's got a, um, a standard motherboard that is obviously created by Tronhu. They've got the uh, they've got A988 drivers on them. You've then got the power supply, which is not a meanwhile power supply. I have heard that the upgraded version of this printer has a meanwhile power supply in it, but this has got a, just a standard generic uh, 24 volt power supply on it. And uh, it's also got your good cable management. Now that is where this printer excels. If you look here, you can see that the actual, uh, all the, the cables inside are properly marked. They've all got a place where they go and it's very neat. Uh, the wiring on this is very neat. It's one of the things with 3D printers, especially with DIY 3D printers, cabling can become a, a problem. There's no proper cable management and trying to have gone the extra mile with this one with cable management. You've got these ribbon cables and I'm, I'm hoping they last up over time. Uh, we'll have to test that over time, but everything has got ribbon cables with proper plugs in there. They plug in and then the ribbon cables are put into the extrusion and cleaned up and taped on here. Very, very neat. Uh, there's plugs at the back here. If you take anything off like the, 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 build, uh, the um, fan mechanism here for the hot end, you'll see that there's all plugs properly marked. Everything is marked. So you just unplug everything. Very easy to work with and clean. If you need to take the, this off, you need to work on your hot end. Uh, speaking about the hot end, it's a very standard hot end. There's nothing fancy about the hot end. Um, I was hoping for an all metal hot end, but maybe that's a little bit too ask out of a budget printer. Uh, your airflow management here is good. It's only on one side, uh, but there is enough space on here to put another fan and to maybe make a modification. Uh, all in all, this is very well built, nice and clean, and uh, your button tube goes all the way down to the hot end, which is very important. It must butt up. That was another pro problem I had. Uh, the end of the cable here was not properly cut. So I had to use my uh, cutter that actually is specifically designed to cut these uh, burden tubes to get it nice and clean. That was a little bit of an issue, but it was not a major issue. The filament runout detection works well. Uh, you've got a, uh, it looks like a Titan extruder clone here, uh, but which works really well. It works well on, on flexible and is really a good extruder. Very happy with that, that they, they put a geared extruder on here. Okay, now on the filament runout detector, I did find a bit of a problem. When your 
your printer runs out of filament so your your filament will go through this side which just pushes a micro switch which is not too big a deal i do want to mention however that sometimes this machine can be a little bit hard to load the filament initially there's two or three attempts because of the line between the, uh, the filament runout detector and the potent extruder is sometimes a little bit of a, a distance away and it's difficult to get things lined up. It takes a couple of attempts and a couple of cuts. But here comes my concern. I'm just going to cut this off over here. So when you run out of filament, so your filament's going to run through your filament runout detector and you're going to run out of filament that's going to come to an end. It's going to pop out of your, your filament sensor, the filament uh, micro switch or switch off and the print will stop and say you need to resume which works really well i have tried it um, in the elephant that i showed in the previous video that did run out of filament so the filament de uh, detector worked well the only problem was when you come to take it out so what you want to do is you want to uh, make sure that the the extruder is not engaged and you want to reverse the wheel so you wind the wheel back and then it hits the metal of the of the runout detector this little flap here they need more metal coming down further down so that when you go backwards through the filament detector it'll be able to slide past this because i found that it butted onto that and um, i had to push another piece of filament to push this down and then ease it back and eventually then i got it to come out and i could pull the the filament that was run out out which is a little bit on the difficult side um, but yeah i know this is a pr common problem with filament run out detectors but all you got to do is have a better runoff on the on the metal here on your micro switch and then your filament will run over there nice and smooth and nice and easily um, and there are no other gripes that i've got with the printer the printer ran smoothly for the two weeks i had it is loud okay maybe that is a gripe it has got a nine uh, four nine eight eight drivers in it which are loud drivers the one model uppers which i suggest you buy is the quiet one i haven't heard the fans on that the fans on this printer are quite loud uh, so yes there is a a fair amount of noise i had this printing in my office last night while i was watching some netflix and it didn't particularly bother me too much but you could hear it in the background there uh, eventually just got uh, you know drowned it out with with netflix but not too loud but uh, at least it didn't wasn't too disturbing so yeah it could be quieter but it's not a, a train smash um, to take the bottom plate off there's a lot of screws you got to take off but this machine is serviceable you can take things off and you can service them also if you look back at this picture here of the motherboard the uh, the drivers are part of the motherboard you can't take the drivers off so you know i might even consider putting a, uh, a btt uh, big tree tech skr mini inside this machine uh, to quieten down the motors and all that but and uh, to get the, the right drivers in it but other than that guys this is a really great quality printer i am happy with it yes there are some uh, some gripes and some quirks but what printer doesn't have this this is uh, build as a semi DIY so you do need to have a little bit of knowledge to fix problems but it does um, it does tick that box of a semi DIY so I'm very happy with this printer thank you Tronu for sending it to me check out um, our channel for more videos and please subscribe guys my goodness 95% of you guys are watching my videos and not subscribing I need my subscriber check out to go up I'm pushing out videos uh, once or twice a week and uh, you know i really want this channel to grow so guys thank you consider supporting me on on patreon look at the instagram channel that we've we've started up with this and uh, have a great day stay safe be well thanks for watching